Soul. We have such a such a treat today with a living legend here with us. Gene Karn is here as a part of the Legends Tour. And first and foremost, I'd like for you to share a little bit, Gene. How did you get started? It was actually before I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do a concert okay. at three for anybody who came came to our house. My mother used to tell me. Then I started singing solo in the church choir at four, started piano lessons at five, mm -hmm. and I became an organist and a conductor for church choirs when I was 12. Okay. M majored in music in college, played bunches of instruments. Mm -hmm. and I guess the rest, as they say, is history. Right. And so not only did you play instruments, but your vocal range uh, certainly uh, it qualifies as an instrument in itself. So you can go, uh, was it four, five octaves? Is that, is that what I, I understand? So I'm told. So you're told? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you were uh, basically uh, coming up in your career, you were in the church. When did you realize I may be taking these talents beyond the church? Oh, I, I was a concert pianist, mm. you know, as a little kid. So mm -hmm. it's always been as a part of you. Yeah, yeah. And so, in addition to singing, you also were a vocal coach, correct? I, I still am. Yeah. You still are. I started working with voices when I began to conduct and play piano and organ for church choir. Because mm -hmm. if you're preparing for, say, say, the Messiah or or Saint-Saëns Christmas Oratorio, mm -hmm. you've got to learn, to, okay, to sing with your, your baritones and with your tenors. Mm -hmm. you got to sing baritone. <laughs> yeah, so... I got I've been working with voices ever since. <laughs> I, I, I bet, I bet. Yeah. Now, you've worked with, pretty much in your career, you have worked with uh, legends yourself. Um, what were some of the most uh, influential people that you enjoyed working with? Oh, at the top is Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington, yeah. wow. What was that like? It was like going on the road with your uncle. Oh, okay. With your favorite uncle. Oh, with your favorite uncle. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then it was not a bad place you could go. There wasn't a bad no, time. Oh, no, no, absolutely. So it was great. Mm -hmm. Now, did I read somewhere that you had worked with Michael Jackson? I vocal coached you Michael. vocal coached yeah. Michael Jackson and now as as we as fans of Michael Jackson learned that uh, being a perfectionist what was that like working with Michael well we were both on Philadelphia International Records at the time mm -hmm. I was you know I was had been a, a, on the label with Gamble and Huff yes. for this was I think that was my second album mm -hmm. and the Jacksons left Motown and went with CBS Records, okay. which was distributed Philly International mm -hmm. and Gamble and Huff. Mm -hmm. So we ended up recording at the same time, staying in the same hotel. And Michael, you know, I was like a mom mm -hmm. to him. Uh, and I, he, he uh, intimated to me that he was having problems cracking. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was hormonal. It's mm -hmm. usually hormonally triggered. Mm -hmm. So... He and I worked on, on, on placing differently and enunciating differently and expanding vowels mm -hmm. differently and to overcome those places where you would crack. Wow. Oh, that's, that's so interesting. That, so that this, the producers didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so that's, I, and I'm, I can imagine that with every, every artist, they have different things or challenges that they go oh, with. Oh, totally. Now, in your music career, uh, jazz, pop, uh, R&B, you saw your music transcend through all of the eras, whether it be disco and internationally. What was that like seeing your music take a life of its own internationally? Oh, you know, early on, I didn't know I had an international uh, oh. audience. Uh -huh. And then... I guess it was in the 80s, mm -hmm. um, we, I started getting invitations to mm -hmm. perform in Europe. And they know every note. <laughs> they know every word. They know how many pieces you sold of mm -hmm. this song. And they know the musicians on, mm -hmm. on the sessions. <laughs> it's fabulous. They're it so loyal. Great. They're and knowledgeable. I appreciate them. 
That, that's great, and that's that's got to be great a great experience to to see your music take a life of its own, extending mm -hmm. beyond where you are, totally. which has to be great. So as a vocalist, being able to, I mean, it's it, the gift you give to audiences, and they feel connected to it. What moves you when you're on stage? What is it that the energy that you pull from? From the audience, they they give you energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot even feel well. Okay. And if you get out there, they give you so much that you could just float. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's it's a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. you know? It's kind of hard to put into words. Yes. And so, what do you do to uh, to keep your 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 instrument fine tuned? What do you do? Oh, the same things I I advocate to all my coaching mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, no smoking, no drinking, no drugs. Get enough rest. No milk products. I mean, there's a whole list of. of I'll both. never be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> That takes a discipline. You, you can cheat every once in a while. Okay. You know, I like ice cream, okay. but not during the weeks when I have to sing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, well, I understand. that's no fun either. No, I bet, <laughs> no. I, I, bet I bet it does take a, a commitment <laughs> to, to excellence yeah. in doing that. Yeah. So now, um, with the legends being a part of the jazz legends, as you see music as it's evolved now to today, when you listen to it, you can see the influences, but you see singers um, having a lot of different altering of their of their voices. How do, as a as a singer yourself, how do you feel about that? It's whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, yeah. It still works. And when you're out there now, uh, as you continue to write your book and your career and your life story, what do you want to leave in your legend? Wow. I hope that I can be remembered maybe as a truth seeker. Mm hmm and one who gave as much as she was given. Nice, that is nice. And now you've worked as, um, you worked um, with family, you've worked with other artists as well. If you were to um, summarize in your travels, which did you enjoy more? Working as a solo artist or working, uh, or working um, as a part of the band, singing with the band? I think it's about equal. You know, because I worked with Norman Connors. Mm -hmm. That was before I became a solo. That mm -hmm. was after I left Doug Karn, you know, and Black mm -hmm. Jazz Records. Mm -hmm. Then then I've worked with um, Wayne Henderson of the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. I've recorded with Earth, Wind, and Fire. And there have been so many artists that I've had the pleasure of, you know, performing with. So I like both sides of, of the, both sides of the, microphone right so and that's great that you find pleasure on both sides because i can tell you gene carney it has been a pleasure for me having this time to talk my to you pleasure and you to share some insights on that and of course with art and soul we have the jazz legends going to be here uh in san antonio and we're looking for you to bless us with your talents so thank you so much gene carn so Gene, I have an interesting, I, as I see, I, Karn is spelled with an E, and it seemed at one point in time that there was no E. Right. Uh, so the proper way is with an E, and the, how did that come to be? Well, uh, of course, it was Karn without the E when I married Doug Karn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, four albums on Black Jazz Records. Uh, that was my first recording adventures. And then in 86... On the advice of two numerologists, I did, um, I added the E, and like that year, Closer Than Close became number one. Mm. So I kept the E, so now either is correct. Oh, either is correct. That's right. Well, from here on out, my name is Quinn with an E. <laughs> okay. Success is on my way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gene.